In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the CSS calc function, which is a really awesome function that we can use in CSS, but it's often awesome in sort of a sneaky kind of way. Hello there, if you're new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And as I said, we're gonna be looking at the calc function, which is a native way to do math with CSS, but you think math, it sounds boring, but Calc opens up lots of really cool doors and fun stuff that you can do with it. And often it's a solution that you know, it's not always the most obvious thing that you want to do, but you can come up with some really cool stuff that you can just do with it. So we're going to be exploring some of those in this video and some fun, you know, we're going to look at how it works, but also some fun and cool things you can do with it. So here we are in, uh, I'm using a VS code as my editor. So here we are, I have a really basic site going on. Uh, there's not too much fancy stuff going on here. It's all just some text. I have an image and this at the top. And um, I have a container here that's holding all of my content. Just to talk again about preprocessors, they first introduced the ability to do calculations. So I am using SAS right now and what um, I have SAS on, so it's going to compile, but it's not something that I normally, uh, we're not gonna be diving into SAS in this video or anything. Um, but just to show you, if I used a call seven, and then, you know, if we're doing a 12 column grid system, it was always kind of annoying, but, uh, cause you had to do math, but with SAS, I could do 100% divided by 12, so that gives splits my 100% into 12 for my columns, and then my call 7, I could do a times 7 on there. And uh, if we go and check out the compiled CSS for that, uh, you can see it's done the math for us and we don't have to worry about it. So that's super handy, but it has its limitations. And the main limitation for it is that we can't do any, we can't mix units. Um, so there are times when it's really, really handy to mix units. And one of those examples can be with a container. So, um, on my container here, I have put a width of 70, but maybe we want to do something a little bit different. So say a lot of the time you'll have a max width on a container. So I'm going to put mine at a pretty small number right now, just because I'm on a limited screen size, but normally that, you know, a thousand or 1200 or whatever you needed to. Um, and on the width here, I can actually do a calc function and I'm gonna do it while mixing units. So I'm gonna say that my width is 100 viewport width. So it's gonna look at the whole screen or the whole, not the whole screen, the whole browser window, I should say. And then minus, let's say 2M. And I'm gonna hit save on that. Um, and what that's gonna do is I don't need to worry about like padding or anything like that or exactly how big it's going to be. I know it's always 2M smaller than my screen. So it's giving me 1M on each side of space until my screen gets too big and eventually I'll hit a max width and then it sort of locks in. I don't have to worry about the math. I don't have to worry about how things are doing. Um, and the reason this works, whereas this, I cannot do this with a preprocessor like SAS or, SAS or less because SAS and less they're taking the math and they're outputting, they're doing the calculation and then outputting like a percentage like we saw, or they're, they're outputting us a, a single unit. Whereas the browser can calculate this on the fly. As things are changing, it sees the viewport width. This is normal CSS. My browser is looking directly at this calculation and it's figuring it out for us. Um, and this is just super useful, but it's most of the uses for calc I find are super useful, but in a really sneaky kind of way. Uh, so another one that's really cool, I love this trick so much, is this awesome breaking out of the grid trick I saw uh, first posted by Tyler Stitka over on Cloud4. Uh, the link for it is in the description below where, say you have an image like this, and let's just, let's make this quite a bit smaller, minus like six, just so we can exaggerate the effect that we're going to have here. Um, so we have a bigger space. So say you have like a blog or something like that that has text running down, but you want the image to spill out the sides of that. Um, so what we could use that for is on my image, I do have a class. Uh, I put a class, uh, it's hiding away over there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, my class is big image. So what I could do is, and again, I am working in an SCSS file, but everything I'm writing now is normal um, CSS. So it doesn't make any, this is all normal CSS that we're looking at. Um, so if I came in here and I did dot big image, and instead of a max width of 100 like this, what I'm gonna do is give it a max width of 100 viewport width, uh, which is obviously going to make it shoot out the side, but then what I can also do then is give it a margin. 
and the margin I'm going to do zero top and bottom. But on the left and the right, we're going to try something a little weird. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to come and give this a margin. We're going to do zero for the top, but then for the uh, top and bottom. And then for the left and right, we're going to do something. And I'm actually going to do a negative 50 viewport width to start with. Just And we'll hit save and see what happens. And it's pulling it that way. And it's also pulling it on that side, but my image doesn't, you know, it's not going to pull that way. But So my, it's going, okay, from this distance, I'm, I'm negatively pulling it that way. And then what I can do is add 50% back into here. And look at that. I have an image that's filling up exactly the whole thing. And it's live, this image is living inside of this container, uh, which is really, really awesome. And actually, I just realized I put this as a max width, but that's a bit of a mistake. Um, I'd want that as a width. And I'm actually, actually, we'll keep max width. And we're going to put width of 100 viewport width just because if not this is going to get in the way and you probably want to have something like that for your normal images so this would just be for big images that are spilling out because if you don't have that it's possible it doesn't actually fit your screen so now you can see that no matter what's going on that image is uh spilling out the sides like that and we can take this one little step further um, and what i can do is actually give this a max height max height of say i don't know 30 viewport height and that can cause my image then to get squished or smushed. So then I could also do an object, object, ob, fit, cover, um, which is the same as like a background um, image cover type of thing. So you can see it's, uh, it will crop the image just a little bit if we're playing around with that, but that's cool. Um, it depends what you're doing. You might not want to do something like that, but it works fantastically and it's really cool. And you don't have to limit it to big images like this. You can also come down. I um, mean, see, I did a CTA. So one of my paragraphs here is CTA. So I'm going to uh, save that. There we go. And I can do the exact same thing. I'm going to give it a width of 100 viewport width first. So now it's going to be too long. And then I'm going to give it the same margin we did before. So I can do mar not margin. We need a margin of zero calc negative 50 viewport width so again that sucks it negative that way and then we're adding a 50 percent back in and this is 50 percent of its own width which is 50 viewport width pretty much but anyway it works out super well um, and it's right there and then we can add in some padding i'll add like 3m on the top and um, so that's what the 3M looks like that. So it's not terrible, but depending on your screen size, it still might sort of cause, or once we get too bigger, it's going to, you know, if you don't want that to happen, um, you'll have to play around with stuff. And again, you could probably use a calc to get something a little more magical to happen there, but we'll leave it just like that for the moment. Um, but just to show you, it doesn't necessarily have to be a text. The only problem with this, because we're using viewport units, is it does give us a little side scrolling. Um, if you don't have a vertical scroll, then you won't get this. But the problem with viewport units is they actually count this space underneath here. So when we're setting this to 100 viewport width, it's actually counting underneath that. So what you can do is on my body, which is actually hidden away here somewhere. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> I, I moved it down just so it wasn't there. But on your body, you want to do an overflow X of hidden and then your little scroll bar goes away. So nice and handy there. It's kind of annoying that you have to do that, um, but c'est la vie. And these are, you know, uh, again, we looked at a few different things here, but um, another one that can be really useful is with font sizes, but do not use this for little font sizes. Um, but it's um, for large font sizes, it can be useful. And I'd probably build in a media query that would prevent something from getting too small. But I have my title here. And again, I'm using a lot of viewport widths. <laughs> Um, but uh, whoops, for the font size, I have three rem right now. So I could actually do, instead of three rem, I could do a calc of like five viewport width plus one rem. Um, and you can see it almost didn't change at all. But now as I get bigger, that font size is going to increase. Or as I get smaller, that font size is going to decrease. <laughs> There's the video I just recorded before. Um, so it sort of makes this responsive uh, text going on. Um, back and forth a little bit, which is handy. And it's nice that you can add in this one rem because it sort of gives it a minimum point. So this is the, the smallest that it could possibly get. If your viewport was zero, it's still going to have a font size. Whereas if you take that out, it just it can make it a lot more extreme. And if you want, you can make this bigger and this a little bit smaller. And then, you know, it's 
I mean, maybe this could even be down to one. Um, and it makes the whole thing a bit less drastic, but it's still, now we're based on like a larger font that's gonna shrink or grow, but not as much. So you can sort of balance out a bit of a balancing act there. But again, be really careful with this because if it's on small font sizes, they can become illegible at small fonts, uh, at small screen sizes. So just be very, very careful with that. So I hope you liked that. I hope you learned something new. I hope you got some ideas. I really love that breaking out of the container thing. I was so happy when I found that. Uh, originally don't use it terribly often but it's one of those things that could be really cool or really useful and you don't even have to go full width with it if you could play with the numbers a bit and you know uh, use it in other ways as well but it's nice not to have to close container or open container and stuff like that just to get something that's full width it can be really really handy in the right place if you have any cool calc tricks please leave them down below let everybody else know about them so that we can build up a nice little database here or come and join us at the community and let us know over there community is a discord channel it's free to join so just go down there's a link there you click you make a username and, and you're in it's as easy as that over there there's people that are brand new to web development as well as some seasoned veterans and everything in between so you will not feel out of place you can ask questions get help help others come over and join us i look forward to seeing you there if this is your first time watching one of my videos and you liked it, please consider subscribing for more videos like this one. I make one every single week. And massive thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here with an even bigger shout out to Lauren, who is my supporter of awesome. Just thank you so much for that. If you're watching this right around when it came out, we're really, really close to my next goal. And with my next goal, I'm going to start closed captioning my videos. So I'm really looking forward to being able to do that. It's something that I've wanted to do almost since I started this channel. And uh, when I hit my next goal, I'll be able to afford to do that. So you can check the link down in the description below to see my Patreon page and everything that goes on over there. I do believe that's it. So until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.